the cave. The giant ran on and on, but now a curious change took place in his way of running. He seemed suddenly to go into a higher gear. Faster and faster he went, and soon he was traveling at such a high speed that the landscape became blurred. The wind stung Sophie's cheeks. It made her eyes water. It whipped her head back and whistled in her ears. She could no longer feel the giant's feet touching the ground. She had a weird sensation they were flying. It was impossible to tell whether they were over land or sea. This giant had some sort of magic in his legs. The wind rushing against Sophie's face became so strong that she had to duck down again into the blanket to prevent her head from being blown away. Was it really possible that they were crossing oceans? It certainly felt that way to Sophie. She crouched in the blanket and listened to the howling of the wind. It went on for what seemed like hours. Then, all at once, the wind stopped its howling. The giant's pace began to slow down. Sophie could feel the giant's feet pounding once again over the earth. She poked her head up out of the blanket to have a look. They were in a country of thick forests and rushing rivers. The giant had definitely slowed down and was running and was now running more normally. Although normal was a silly word to use for to describe a galloping giant. He leaped over a dozen rivers. He went rattling through a great forest, then down into a valley and up over a range of hills as bare as concrete. And soon he was galloping over a desolate wasteland that was not quite of this earth. The ground was flat and pale yellow. Great lumps of blue rock were scattered around, and dead trees stood everywhere like skeletons. The moon had long since disappeared, and now the dawn was breaking. Sophie, still peering from the blanket, saw suddenly ahead of her a great craggy mountain. The mountain was dark blue, and all around it the sky was gushing and glistening with light. Bits of pale gold were flying among delicate frosty white flakes of cloud, and over to the to one side the rim of the morning sun was coming up red as blood. Right beneath the mountain the giant stopped. He was puffing mightily, his great chest was heaving in and out. He paused to catch his breath. Directly in front of them, lying against the side of a mountain, Sophie could see a massive round stone. It was as big as a house. The giant reached out and rolled the stone to one side as easily as if it had been a football. And now where the stone had been, there appeared a vast black hole. The hole was so large, the giant didn't even have to duck his head as he went in. He strode into the black hole, still carrying Sophie in one hand, the trumpet and suitcase in the other. As soon as he was inside, he stopped and turned and rolled the great stone back into place so that the entrance to his secret cave was completely hidden from the outside. Now that the entrance had been sealed up, there was not a glint of light inside the cave. All was black. Sophie felt herself being lowered to the ground. Then the giant let go of the blanket completely. His footsteps moved away. Sophie sat there in the dark, shivering with fear. He is really, he is getting ready to eat me, she told herself. He will probably eat me raw, just as I am. Or perhaps he will boil me first. Or he will have me fried. He will drop me like a rasher of bacon into some gigantic frying pan, sizzling with fat. A blaze of light suddenly lit up the whole place. Sophie blinked and stared. She saw an enormous cavern with a high rocky roof. The walls on either side were lined with shelves, and on the shelves there stood row upon row of glass jars. There were more jars everywhere. Or, there were jars everywhere. They were piled up in the corners. They filled every nook and cranny of the cave. In the middle of the floor, there was a table 12 feet high and a chair to match. The giant took off his black cloak and hung it against the wall. Sophie saw that under the cloak, he was wearing a, sh a sort of colorless shirt and a dirty old leather waistcoat that didn't seem to have any buttons. His trousers were faded green and were far too short in the legs. 
On his bare feet, he was wearing a pair of ridiculous sandals that for some reason had holes cut along each side with a long hole at the end where his toe stuck out. Sophie, crouching on the floor of the cave in her nightie, gazed back at him through thick steel-rimmed glasses. She was trembling like a leaf in the wind and a finger of ice was running up and down her, the length of her spine. Ha! Huh! shouted the giant, walking forward and rubbing his hands together. What has us got here? His booming voice rolled around the room of the cave like a burst of thunder. This is the next chapter, the BFG. The giant picked up the trembling Sophie with one hand and carried her across the cave and put her on the table. Now he was really going to eat me, Sophie thought. The giant sat down and stared hard at Sophie. He, was tr he had truly enormous ears. Each one was as big as the wheel of a truck, and he seemed to be able to move them inward and outward from his head as he wished. I is hungry, the giant boomed. He grinned, showing massive square teeth. The teeth were very white and very square, and they sat in his mouth like huge slices of white bread. P -p -p Please don't eat me, Sophie stammered. The giant let out a bellow of laughter. Just because I is giant, you think I is a man goblin cannibal? He shouted. You is about right. Giants is all cannibals and murderful. And they does gobble up human beings. We is a giant we is in giant country now. Giants is everywhere around. Out there us has the famous bone crunching giant. Bone crunching giant crunches up two whoopy swifflin' human beings for supper eve every night. Noise is ear bustling. Noise of crunching bones goes crackly crack for miles around. Ouch, Sophie said. Bone crunching giants only gobble human beings from turkey, the giant said. Every night, bone cruncher is gobbling off to turkey to gobble turks. Sophie's sense of patriotism was suddenly so bruised by this remark that she became quite angry. Why Turks? she blurted out. What's wrong with the English? Bone Crunch and Giant say Turks is tasty, oh, ever so much juicier and more scrumbly umptious. Bone Cruncher says Turkish, pe Turkish human beings has a glamorous flavor. He says Turks from Turkey is tasty of turkey. I suppose that would make sense, Sophie said. Of course that does, the giant shouted. Every human being is dibbly and different. Some is scrumbly umptious and some is uckleish. Greeks is all full of uckleish. No giant is eating Greeks ever. Why not, Sophie said. Greeks from Greece is all tasty of greasy, the giant said. I imagine that's possible too, Sophie said. She was wondering with a bit of tremble, with a bit of a tremble, what all this talking about eating people was leading up to. Whatever happened, she simply must play along with this particular giant, or peculiar giant, and smile at his jokes. But were they jokes? Perhaps the great brute was just working up an appetite by talking about food. As I'm saying, the giant went on, all human beings is having different flavors. Human beings from Panama is tasting very strong hats. Why hats? Sophie said. <laughs> you are not very clever, the giant said, moving his ears in and out. I thought all human beings is full of brains, but your head is emptier than a bongolong. Do you like vegetables? Sophie asked, hoping to steer the conversation towards a slightly less dangerous kind of food. You is trying to change the subject, the giant said sternly. We is having an interesting babblement about the taste of human being. The human being is not a vegetable. Oh, but the bean is a vegetable. Sophie said. 
Not the human being, the giant said. The human being has two legs, and the vegetable has no legs at all. Sophie didn't argue anymore. The last thing she wanted to do was to make the giant cross. The human being, the giant went on, is common in dillions of different flavors. For instance, human beings from Wales is tasting very whooshy of fish. There is something very whooshy or very fishy about whales. Do you mean whales with an H? Sophie said. Whales is something quite different. Whales is whales, the giant said. Don't gobble funk around with words. I will now give you another example. Human beings from Jersey has a most disgustable woolly thick on the tongue, the giant said. Human beings from Jersey is tasting of cardigans. You mean jerseys? Sophie said. You are once again gobble funking. The giant shouted, don't do it. This is serious and snitching subject. May I continue? Please do, Sophie said. Danes from Denmark is tasting ever so much of dogs, the giant went on. Of course, Sophie said. They taste of greater Danes, of great Danes. Wrong, cried the giant, slapping his thigh. Danes from Denmark is tasting doggy because they is tasting of Labradors. Then what do the people of Labrador taste like? Sophie asked. Danes, the giant cried triumphantly. Great Danes! Aren't you getting a bit mixed up? Sophie asked. I is a very mixed up giant, the giant said, but I does do my best. And I is not nearly as mixed up as the other giants. I know one who gallops all the way to Wellington for his supper. Or gallops all the way to Wellington for his supper. Wellington? Sophie said. Where is Wellington? Your head is full of squashed flies, the giant said. Wellington is in New Zealand. The human beings in Wellington has an especially scrumbly umptious taste. So says the welly eaten giant. What do the people of Wellington taste of? Sophie asked. Boots, the giant said. Of course, Sophie said. I should have known. Sophie decided that this conversation had now gone on long enough. If she was going to be eaten, she'd rather get it over and done with right away than, than keep, oh sorry, than be kept hanging around any more. What sort of human beings do you eat? She asked, trembling. Me? shouted the giant. His mighty voice became or er, his mighty voice making the glass jars rattle on the shelves. Me gobbling up human beings? This I never. The others, yes. All the others is gobbling them up every night. But not me. I is a freaky giant. I is a nice, jumbly giant. I is the only nice and jumbly giant in giant country. I is the big, friendly giant. I is the BFG. What is your name? My name is Sophie, Sophie said, hardly daring to believe the good news she had reached or she had heard. The next chapter is the giants, but I don't read that tonight.